Hey everyone, Anthony Alfredo, and today I wanted to help guide you through the D-Box setup and how to install not only D-Box Game Center, but adjust your motion code settings for whichever game or simulation that you are playing. In this case, uh, I'm an iRacing user, and when I hop on the service, I can adjust all sorts of haptics that D-Box has to offer through D-Box Game Center settings. We're going to open those up, and I'm going to help guide you through that process. So once you go to the D-Box website and download D-Box Game Center, you're going to open up that application right here. And when you open it, you're going to see this. So in this case, the only game or sim that I have installed is iRacing. And as you can see, the status says it's ready. I have the latest motion code installed, and you could do reinstall, which will allow you to download the motion code. I'm going to do that just for the sake of this video. So this is something you'll be able to do. You can click yes. You click next. Next. Agree. And then it'll start. So I'm going to cancel this because we already have it, and it's up to date. But when you open it up, you hit launch. Over here also, this is your motion code setup guide. So this automatically opens and it guides you through the process, which makes it even easier. So uh, technically, you don't even need this video. <laughs> but I'm still going to guide you through the rest of the process. And it's pretty simple. It's as simple as one click on launch. And it's going to open up iRacing. Now you, you're on the iRacing website. Uh, you can also set this up for beta UI. and for future reference too, if you want to adjust your settings, you just click on the settings tab, and here are your iRacing motion code settings. But of course, that's relative to whichever game or simulation you're playing. So these are the motion codes, right? So if we are playing, we'll just pick a random one, Grid 2. If we we're playing Grid 2, you would click settings on that and be able to adjust it all. In this case, Obviously, it's iRacing. Here's your global settings for everything. Um, but if you go on the motion code and hit settings, it'll open up this. And when you have this open, there's your main level. And I have everything at baseline right now. It's all on default. But you can go to the motion profile editor and adjust, adjust each individual haptic. You can also set up different profiles, which is really cool. Um, so you can set up one that maybe is a little bit more aggressive, uh, one that's a little bit more mellow, depending on which you'd prefer to use. And... Some people may want to set up different profiles for different cars, right? So if you're racing an off-road vehicle that has really aggressive and emphasized movements and body roll and all sorts of different things that these haptics are useful for, you might want to turn them up a little bit. But if you're racing some sort of road car that maybe is more rigid, uh, doesn't move as much, and is pretty stiff and just rides low to the ground, you may want to turn them down. And all these, I think... The baseline's perfect for stock car racing, actually, on ovals and even when they head to the road courses. So I've just left them where they're at. But as you can see, you can adjust each individual one, starting with your general motion. We're going to go through each one of these just to help guide you through the process a little bit and help you have a little bit better understanding. The acceleration front to rear. You see defaults at 40 for the majority of these. Some of them are different values, which is why you see different numbers there. Um, but you got your front to rear your acceleration, front to rear reactivity, then your left, right, and your up and down. Then when you go to banking, you have your overall body roll, your pitch, and your recenter. So that's a different value, as you can see, which is why it's 50. This is out of 100. And you can hit this nice little undo, undo button and go back to 50 right there. So that always helps uh, if you want to test and mess around with stuff and maybe you didn't like it or maybe you forgot what default was, you can just hit that and go back to baseline. Here's a couple different settings. You have uh, inverted yaw, inverted surge, but your regular yaw settings are yaw gain, reactivity, your angular velocity, and your percentage drift balance, your surge gain, and your surge reactivity. And like I said, I have all these on uh, baseline as well, and I do not have advanced surge check, which is actually uh, allows you to adjust brake and acceleration surge, but um, that was unchecked by default, so I left it there. Your engine vibration, this is one of two things I adjusted. My engine vibration and my skid vibration, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, I have it turned all the way down, actually. Um, but you could put it up a little bit. Um, I find that the rest of the haptics kind of uh, 
not overpower anything. I think they compensate for the engine vibration, which is why I have it all. It's just personal preference. Um, it's also kind of cool if you do want it, though, and if you want to turn it up all the way and just really feel the horsepower out of some of those big motors and uh, the iRacing service or any of those uh, those cool cars and even some of the other ones, just feel those engines roar um, in high-speed sections of racetracks. It's also automatic, so... Um, so you can you can pick something specific, but if you have it on automatic, it'll it'll adjust it, or you can do custom RPM ranges too. Like I said, this is all actually on baseline. Skid vibration I have all the way down as well. Um, these values for the vibrations are just the overall intensity of it. Uh, if um, if you are curious, and the last few we have here starts with suspension, which is your overall motion and vibration intensity um, of the suspension in your race car or whichever car you're driving the surface texture this is another uh intensity value and baseline's 40 but that's really cool for just getting over bumps and experiencing different characteristics of racetracks while you're racing crash damping this is all the way off but this is something you could check on and um you can kind of adjust that for depending on items you may be hitting or objects you're hitting during during different races gear shift is another intensity value and that's that's uh set to 40 automatically but this is pretty neat too because when you're in a car that maybe shifts aggressively or, or say you're in a stock car and you're banging gears you know you you shift and you stand back on the gas after you know you lift pull it in a gear and stand back on the throttle and it launches you back like that which is really cool and that's something you might want to adjust for different types of cars as well but that's what's neat about this is you can adjust each one of these haptics individually and kind of develop the best overall experience for yourself but as i pointed out some other videos testing the the overall capabilities of dbox technology I think they have the baseline set perfectly. I think they're very well-rounded and diverse for all sorts of different disciplines of racing. And I think that they are great the way they are. Like I said, the in my case, the only thing I adjusted was the vibration settings for the engine and skid. But other than that, I think they work for all sorts of things. But if you really wanted to dig deeper, you can develop different profiles for me. I'm a NASCAR driver, and in stock car racing, these settings seem to work really well for me on the ovals and even the road courses. When I get into different disciplines and I'm in different types of race cars, racing at different tracks, some of those things I've never driven before, I may not have driven at that specific track or in that specific car ever in real life. So I, I don't really know what to what to adjust, right? So I kind of just go with the flow and run with this. But the, the NASCAR and stock car racing things, um, I definitely have a pretty good idea of what it should feel like and I think the baseline's perfect which is why I haven't really touched it uh, but like I said if you want to develop other profiles for your dirt oval racing your dirt road course and your paved oval and road course disciplines that's something uh, useful to have and I think is probably one of the most valuable things that D-Box has to offer so I hope you enjoyed the video and I appreciate you all watching it was definitely fun to kind of dive deeper into what D-Box has to offer and just check out each individual haptic that you can adjust to make take full advantage of D-Box technology. I'm looking forward to uh, creating some profiles of my own for other racing as I get better and, and some of the things when I get out of my element and get off the, the paved oval in a stock car and do a little bit of sports car stuff and things like that because it's definitely uh, very useful to have. But I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them or reach out to me directly. And I'm looking forward to uh, creating more content with you guys regarding D-Box and getting this thing going and seeing what this thing's capable of. Thank you all for the support, and I'll talk to you all later.